Yeah! What's good, YouTube? It's your boy, Only One KDB, and I'm back with another video. In today's video, we got embarrassing malfunctions in WWE. Now, if you're new to the channel, make sure you like, share, and subscribe. Smash that notification bell so you're notified when I drop another bang. Make sure y'all smash that like button because it helps me get into the algorithm. I'm not the biggest YouTube on the platform, but I'm trying to get there, though. But we about to get to the video, man. Shout out to WrestleMania, and let's get it. I ain't finna hold y'all for too much longer. 11 funniest malfunctions that happened in WWE. Let's Number get 11, it. a production blunder is laughed off at WrestleMania 4. It was a common place for WWE commentary team to ignore production blunders under the old regime. Vince Damn, McMahon evidently fell? believed that if commentators such as Michael Cole ignored the blunder in question, then hopefully the WWE fans watching at home won't realize that anything went wrong. Whilst <laughs> this is somewhat sound logic, it insults the WWE viewers' intelligence, and in the new era of WWE, Triple H has allowed his commentators free reign when it comes to discussing botches and blunders. This was on full display at WrestleMania 40 when idea. Awesome Truth's graphics were shown for the new Catch Republic. Instead of ignoring the production mistake, Michael Cole found great humor in the situation and actually referenced it on commentary. This was great to see as everyone watching at home could clearly see the mistake. And it would yeah, that's that's smart because it, like, it showed the authenticity of the, you know what I'm saying? If you tell them to ignore the shit and just don't pay attention to it, like it wouldn't be as authentic. Uh, authentic! totally nonsensical for Cole to just ignore it. Number 10, The Rope Snaps, No Mercy 2002. One of the key parts of the WWE ring is the ring ropes, and before each show, WWE's ring crew must ensure that the ropes are tight and completely safe to wrestle with. Okay. As WWE usually takes this to the next level, as it usually tightens the ropes between matches, but everything went wrong at the 2002 No Mercy pay-per-view. Chris Jericho teamed with Christian to take on Booker T and Goldust, and when Jericho attempted a springboard from the middle rope, the rope completely snapped. Yo! Jericho had an awkward landing, but thankfully he wasn't hurt. Due to the four men involved in the match being incredible in the ring, they were able to put the match back together, yet this was a dangerous malfunction that would have led to serious questions being asked backstage. Number 9. What is that music? Royal Rumble 2003. The Royal Rumble match is one of the most important matches on the WWE calendar, and the WWE production team has to be on top of the game to ensure that the show goes smoothly. However, botches can happen at any time, and the WWE production team made a huge yet comedic blunder at the 2003 installment of the popular event. After Brock Lesnar just won the matchup, an unusual theme song began to play. This wasn't Lesnar's iconic theme, it was instead a theme song for the actual pay-per-view, that being trust companies falling apart. A footage of this error is hard to find, as WWE were quick to edit Lesnar's theme song over the track on the future replays and digital releases. Number 8, wow. Randy Orton's extended weight, Royal Rumble 2009. I remember it's this. Well documented that early on. This when he was pointing at the sign and it didn't do nothing. Man, I'd have been embarrassed like a motherfucker. Like, god damn, my family watching this and I'm pointing at the sign. It's supposed to explode and shit like that, have fireworks and it's supposed to be a, be a beautiful scenery. I'm pointing at the goddamn sign and ain't nothing happening. What's, what's going on? I'd have been embarrassed, bro. During his WWE career, Randy Orton was prone to lashing out, as he legit had anger issues. When Orton won the 2009 Royal Rumble, he was supposed to point to the WrestleMania sign and the pyro would ensue. However, when Orton did this, nothing actually happened. Orton tried multiple times to no avail. Wow. Orton's facial expressions during this huge production botch told the whole story, as Orton was noticeably seething. The pyro would eventually hit, yet the WWE production team was probably met with stern words from Orton once he came back through the curtain. Due to the moment being embarrassing for both WWE and Randy Orton, they have since edited the footage on the WWE Network, meaning it looks like everything went ahead as planned, but in reality, this couldn't be further from the truth. Mm -hmm. Number 7. Wrong Match Card Graphics Name card graphics usually contain key information, such as a wrestler's name and which respective title that they're holding to the ring. Unfortunately, the WWE production team is prone to messing up these match card graphics time and time again. Take for instance at WrestleMania 34, one of the biggest matches on the show was a match between AJ Styles and Shinsuke Nakamura for the WWE title. For some reason, my boy Shinsuke AJ Nakamura. I said Nakamura. Nakamura. Oh. oh God damn it! That song is great, man. I like that entrance. I ain't gonna lie, he got one of the best entrances in the WWE. Number one is Cody Rhodes, until proven otherwise. But let's continue. Universal Champion on the name tag rather than the WWE Champion. Due to this era taking place at a WrestleMania event, it was a hot topic on social media and probably caused intense anger backstage. 
Another memorable one was at Clash at the Castle Scotland when Cody Rhodes came out as WWE Undisputed Champion. Unfortunately, WWE messed up the nameplate as it read Talent Name and Women's Tag Team Champions. Another more humorous name card graphic Yo. came up at WrestleMania 38 as the winner of the annual Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal Mad Cat Moss would appear on the kickoff show and his name card graphic hilariously said that he won the Andre the Giant Memorial Battle Royal. Number 6, wow. Bobby Lashley falls out of the ring at 2022 live event. And due to virtually every fan in attendance at a WWE house show having access to a camera on their phone, footage of botches at live events are quickly distributed across social media. This is the case in 2002 when the ropes snapped while Bobby Lashley was wrestling at a live God event in the damn. UK. Lashley would run against the ropes and the ropes snap was so sudden that Lashley fell out of the ring and had a truly horrific landing. Thankfully, the former WWE Champion wasn't hurt in the ordeal, and it was possible that due to Lashley's size and strength, the brute force snapped the rope, but this is ultimately a factor that WWE should always consider when tightening the ropes even for a live event. Yeah. Number 5. John Cena's Mic Issues WrestleMania 19 WrestleMania 19's pre-show, aka Sunday Night Heat, saw John Cena deliver a trademark rap to get the fans in the mood for the show. As seen as WrestleMania debut didn't get off to the best of starts, as his mic had continuous problems. Cena, like the professional he was, pushed through and was able to save the segment. Why WWE didn't test the microphone beforehand is anyone's guess, and this unintentionally became a test to see how WWE's future top guy could handle the pressure, and he did incredibly well. Number 4. John Cena Wins SmackDown 2003 John Cena picked up the first major win of his career on SmackDown back in 2003. He teamed up with Brock Lesnar to take on Kurt Angle and The Undertaker, and Cena secured the win for his team by pinning Kurt Angle. When okay. Cena pinned Angle, for whatever reason, Angle's theme song began to play. This led to speculation that maybe Cena and Lesnar weren't supposed to win the match and Angle was supposed dun, dun, to kick out. Dun, dun, dun. Smackdown was also taped at this point and for whatever reason, they didn't edit out the huge production blunder which led to even more questions. Over two decades on from the blunder and WWE have since dubbed over Angle's theme with Cena's Word Life theme song. Is it possible that WWE didn't even notice that they made the mistake initially? It's entirely Dang. possible, but during the taped era of SmackDown, they were usually extremely proactive in editing out any botches from either the wrestlers or the production team. Number 3. The Shield's new theme, Raw 2014 The Shield had one of the most recognizable theme songs of the past two decades, and it was most recently heard at WrestleMania 40 when Seth Rollins interfered in Night 2's main event using the celebrated theme. Infamously, back in February of 2014 on an episode of Raw, as the Shield made their way down to the ring, the WWE production team accidentally played the wrong theme song for the trio. Instead of their theme, they came out to the dreaded Total Divas theme song. It must have been Yo. some kind of joke, and it's clear based on Ambrose's face that he found great humor in the situation. Ooh, Ambrose was set to defend his US title against Mark Henry, so this production error was likely playing in his mind throughout the duration of his title defense. WWE were quick to edit the mistake and the footage of the original cut of the Shield's entrance has become extremely difficult to find. Number 2. Kane's Pyro Fail Raw 2005 One of the main oh, moments of Kane's this. WWE entrance Just saw him raise his hands above his head and when he dropped them, Pyro would then shoot off. However, when Kane attempted to deliver his usual pre-match taunt on Raw in 2005, nothing happened. Kane looked absolutely speechless that nothing had occurred, and Kane's partner Big Show, who was standing in the ring, looked like he was about to break character. As for Kane, he was usually incredibly gifted at staying in character, yet he couldn't even help but offer a smirk. And number one, Mr. WrestleMania doesn't get Pyro, WrestleMania 28. Due to the grandiosity of WrestleMania, WWE traditionally go all out with their Pyro for their top names. At WrestleMania 28, Mr. WrestleMania Shawn Michaels made his way to the ring to referee the end of an era match between Triple H and The Undertaker. As HBK delivered his entrance, it came to his usual spot where his pyro would hit, but for some reason, nothing happened. HBK would just act like this was completely normal, which was probably the best way to handle the malfunction. Wow. A similar situation occurred two years prior at WrestleMania 26, as a young Kofi Kingston who was set to have his pyro hit during his entrance, and just like HBK, the pyro failed. For Kingston's entrance, the pyro would just hit one single time, but his usual entrance would have the pyro that would go off multiple times. This left Kingston looking awkward, yet he managed to move past it without drawing too much attention to the WWE production blunder. It's common knowledge Dang. that WrestleMania is rehearsed, and this extends to pyro, so these pyro malfunctions were likely the production team failing to press the correct button in time, or potentially getting their production notes mixed up. But there you have it folks, 11 of the funniest malfunctions. Damn, man. This video was interesting, man.
That was embarrassing my own functions in WWE. If y'all enjoyed that reaction video, make sure y'all like, share, and subscribe. Smash that like button so y'all can get me in the algorithm because it helps me get into the algorithm. I'm not the biggest YouTube on this platform, but I'm trying to get there, though. Make sure y'all hit that notification bell, too, man. And I'm out of here, man. I appreciate y'all, boys.